Hi, my fourth and fifth graders. It's Mrs. Magania again. This is part two to your weekly assignment. And the assignment was on totem poles. So this is the how to create. So what you should have done is on Seesaw, write to me what maybe two or three. I'm trying to keep things easy, okay? Now, if you are looking for a challenge, here's why I even did this lesson in the first place. I feel like we have not created a lot, and I was asking you, we did the virtual art tour, we've done some writing things. I loved the quarantine photos. That was like so cool for me. And I think it was kind of easy because you just had to grab things that mean something to you. This could be a little bit harder. So I will not be like, oh, they failed that assignment. If you don't have the simple things that I'm looking for, that's not the point, okay? So it's a two-part lesson because one, I wanna get you thinking. Now you all have this guy, and so I know that you can totally have written or recorded or wrote down or sketched on two or three creatures. Now, I do have some students that decided to go the sports route or maybe meaningful objects. I had this really cool one that was doing um, possibly Pokemon or anything that would mean something, but also work together. Now my tip, think about why these things go together. Is it because they all live outside? Do they all live in the zoo? Do they all, like the Pokemon one, they all work together for that? Are they all sports? A couple of you had picked like a sport and then a couple of animals. Now, you could make those all go together by saying, like, I like this animal, this is my pet, and I love this sport. Maybe that's a personal totem pole, right? And so we're kind of going off of what a traditional totem pole was or is to people. And the Native American culture up in the Northwest used trees, right? How ironic, your main base for this project is from a tree. So I asked for you to get a paper towel or a toilet paper tube. What if you don't have those? You fail, I'm kidding, no, you're fine. So my plan B for you is two ideas. One, you could work on a sketch what would your totem pole look like? Some of you might not like the 3D idea. This is 3D, right? I can see all around it. Now, I haven't really paid attention to my back as much, right? All the details on the front, but this is 2D, flat. There's nothing wrong with doing this for your project. I'm sorry, I dropped my tube on the floor. Um, another thing you would need if you wanted an elaborate very detailed one like Mrs. Magania, you will need scraps of cardboard. Here's my cardboard. I ripped this off of a Target box. I was throwing the box away, so please make sure that that's okay that you do that. Or, lots of ors, I'm giving you ideas, okay? Paper, you could even cut paper up to put on your object to make it look 3D. Here we go. Things I did. Number one, I also used a glue gun. I highly doubt that all of my students in fourth and fifth grade have glue gun access. I, I know that's not realistic. Some of you might. And so I wanna give to you a little bit harder of a lesson that you can really create. Maybe you're really hungry to make something like crazy elaborate. Um, if you can't find a glue gun, you don't have one. It's not un likely that you couldn't use a glue bottle. When I saw your scavenger hunt, a lot of you did have glue sticks or the glue bottle thing. You might even have tape, okay? So you could have this kind of tape. Maybe you have masking tape, maybe you have duct tape, maybe you have the really cool washi tape I saw one of you had. That would look cool too. Do you have to paint? Absolutely not, okay? So before we got started, I really wanted to go over things with you about how you could still make this successful, okay? What am I really grading you on? Well, I want you to think about what you are putting together, why you're putting it together, and then sort of how does it go together. Another very interesting tip as an artist, we like things 
that maybe transform the uh, everyday object here. So I added a lot of things that come off of my sculpture, things that are additive, make it relief, high relief, low relief. I even have negative space, space that's not there. It makes it interesting. So thinking about details on your drawing and on your sculpture will help me grade you on this, okay? All right, if you're doing a drawing, even if you're not, maybe you have that tube, you might wanna sketch out what you're gonna do before you do it. So I'm gonna pretend that my Sharpie right now is a pencil. It's not, but let's pretend. I'm gonna zoom down, okay? So you can kinda see what I'm doing here. All right. I'm gonna create a tube shape. So I'm gonna take that oval, there you are, and I'm going to draw with my terrible Sharpie down two vertical lines and sort of curve a bottom line, okay? Now, I put a base to my project. It's a simple square. It makes it stable. That means it's not moving and it gives it a spot to kind of set or rest on. And so that's gonna be my base. Okay, I'm zooming back up. And here's what I'm thinking. You can then create on this what animals or subject you're looking for. Let's talk. I put that bird at the top and so I made feathers. I noticed a lot on totem poles and on my example that I gave you, I'm gonna actually type it in so I know what I'm talking about. I included that PDF file. So a lot of them have the eagle or the bird and those wings, and I notice they're all kind of at the top. Wonder why? Hmm, probably something to do with balance, don't you think? If you put that really heavy weighted object on the bottom, I, I'm not sure, you know, it, it might not look as appealing. It might not be as stable. So you have to sort of think about where you are placing things. And a lot of you did, I noticed, put birds on yours. So I've got my wings off to the side. And on the bottom here, I've got my little raccoon. And to make him less boring, I did add those little wispy lines to go off of my totem pole. Now, what about something like a rabbit? I could put the ears right here, and I use sort of those swoopy, um, loopy shapes. And then I even had something like an owl, right? Couldn't I add just a triangle, a really simple thing for a beak? Absolutely. On this one, I have antlers sticking out, right? And I have um, lots of ears on my creatures, lots of ears. Okay, I don't wanna do this for you. So I'm just sort of showing you ideas of what you could do and how you could create. If you were making a sport-like thing, mm, that's not really going to um, give you a lot of detail. But what if you thought about, okay, a baseball also involves a bat. So what if you have a bat, but then the basketball? So see how you're sort of varying up the shapes? Um, that Those two shapes look very different. Also, what if it's too hard for you to create a ballet slipper? You're like, oh man, this is really hard. Is there something else with ballet that might be easier? Maybe um, a symbol. Maybe um, thinking about the shoe shape itself, um, having the laces come off, things like that might make it a little bit more interesting. All right, I think we are understanding the drawing. And you can go back to that PDF and sort of zoom in if you have to with different shapes and designs. If I had a tube, okay, I need a tube base. So I'm gonna take my cardboard and I'm going to cut it into a square. So I'm taking off the side piece of my cardboard and just sort of hacking away to get that square base. Now, I'm taking a scissors. So you do need a scissors. And cardboard is a little bit tricky to cut, but it's not super difficult, okay? Especially if you get the thinner piece. Do you have to have a base? What if you don't have cardboard? You can just hold this up. It could rest onto something too, a book or whatever on your shelf. That might be okay. And then I'm pretending I do have all supplies right now. And so I'm gonna take my glue gun and just draw in a circle to match 
the bottom of my tube. So I just sort of squish this down. If I do not have glue and I want to do the crazy additive thing, I could take tape and sort of just wrap it around the base. Okay. Um, ideas. So how to get things to work. Sort of engineering goes into this, doesn't it? If I'm putting my tape here, right, that's going to stabilize my sculpture a little bit better, right? The more pieces I put on, and it's not always more is better, is it? So we want these things to be a little bit um, less and meaningful and purposeful. Like you, you don't want to just throw tape all over this. Okay, base secure. Now, I did something that I thought might help you too. If you have a paper towel tube and you are thinking two creatures, that's a lot of space, right? This is a lot of space. I have to cut this in half, not literally, but drawing with a pencil and know that this is one piece and this is the second. Hmm. Could I maybe put three things on here and divide this into three? Artists love things in odd numbers. I actually put, holy cow, one, maybe two, three, right? Four, almost five things on here. So I put a lot. I wanted you to see different ideas. Um, you don't have to cram that many things in. To make my spacing, I might just pencil and kind of find sort of a good fit for it. If I'm gonna do that baseball bat, I'm gonna want a little more room than maybe the soccer ball or the basketball. If I do a, oh, some of you had the beaver I noticed you picked off the thing, maybe the eagle, that might be a little bit more than let's say the beaver, okay? As I'm drawing, pencil, it's not very dark, right? It could easily erase, so I can kind of have those lines for myself to see. Then, let's say I do have cardboard, and I'll show you paper next. I could take a little snippet, right? And maybe I'm going to draw, I'm going to grab an actual black Sharpie here for a second. Um, maybe just a simple wing that might be sort of that football shape. Okay, so th simplify things for yourself, guys. If you know that you can't draw the crazy wing like Mrs. Magania had, then don't. Do something that works for you. Maybe you want to see that wing. And so YouTube's kind of cool because you can stop, right, and pause and really stare at this thing to see the shape that I did use. That might help you too. You also have the internet at your fingertips. You could type in totem pole if you don't like the ones I showed with you and sort of find a couple ideas that way. Now I've got this sort of leaf-like leaf -like shape. I could stick this up here, but what if I want to get the same one, right? Totem poles have symmetry, which is the same on both sides. If I want to do the same thing, I might just want to hold it down and cut, right? Or be smarter. I might just take and trace that same shape. Then I know exactly. Notice when I put mine at the edge, right? Why would I do that? to save space, right? I'm not wasting my cardboard. And I make, this is a fancy word, but little relief cuts, okay? So I take little tiny pieces out before I get to cutting that bigger shape. It helps and it also helps not break my scissors. Now I am cutting this fast. I, I do this weird sort of stuff a lot. I know that this might be hard for you to cut. Okay, so feel free to ask for help. Feel free to simplify. Feel free to not have such an elaborate design. Okay, this is for my friends that A, maybe want to watch the video just for some cool ideas, something to do. Or B, maybe you are actually looking to make something a little bit cooler than just um, the basic online stuff. If you don't have a paper and a pencil, could you draw your totem pole on Seesaw? You could. But I'm not, I'm not going to be so picky with details, but I would love to see labels. You know, what did you draw? Why did you think that? Maybe start to color in. Like, what color would you paint it if you could paint it, right? There are lots of options for us to sort of still have art without us being in the art room. Okay, as I was talking, I trimmed down my wings. I made them a little more detailed. 
Here is another trick that I did. I took my tube and very carefully, look how my scissors are, you gotta be careful here. I actually just cut in, and I did this sort of slow, but I sort of poke in and hack down, not much, just a little bit, a little way for me to stick this in. <gasps> what if I don't have a glue gun? I literally just put this on here and there's no glue, so that could work. If I do have a glue gun, I just stuck in a little bit of glue, right? And then I put my wing on and now it's gonna stay. If you had a mom um, that maybe had a glue gun and uh, she didn't want you using it, she could do all the gluing for you. Maybe if you help cut the shapes or an older brother, older sister. Some of you have my former students that I know are excellent artists um, and they would more than willing, I'm sure, be able to help you with your design. I think I did this one year too. Okay, so a couple of cool tricks I learned along the way. Um, I, with my tube, check this out. If you take your tube, maybe you have a toilet paper tube, and I cut it right down the middle here. I create these like really cool shapes that are ovalish, and I sort of pinched at the sides of them and pulled it in. And so that's how I made the top of this. So I took three of them. So one, two, okay? Maybe you can find something cool to make. Maybe this could be your wing, I don't know. Um, but I love the idea of the negative space, space that's not there. We talked a little bit about this. And then I sort of glued this carefully. Remember three, um, right here at the, at the top, okay? Another cool thing I thought. I cut a little bit chunkier of a strip. Okay, you can see how that was at the tube. Huh? And I cut this piece, but I also cut it in the center. So what happens then is I can wrap it and twist it. And I sort of glued this on the square edge. This is trickier, but that is how I made this guy's beak from the toilet paper tube. So I could even just take a triangle and I could glue this for my little beak here, right? And so then it's a little flatter. It's not as 3D um, or popped out as the other one. Um, ears, same with the ears. I could take that same sort of triangle-like shape, okay? And two of those would make sort of those ears down here, sort of the wolf-like deer thing I had going on. Does that make sense? So lots of cool ideas to get you to have these 3D pieces. What if I am not having luck at finding cardboard, but I did get my tube? Well, I could take paper. So I might have an extra piece of paper. Pardon me while I reorganize myself here. I'm gonna zoom down a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, what if I took my paper, and the same sort of thing. If you fold things in half, guys, and drew or cut, I could get the same shape twice. I had this kindergarten teacher say that this was a kindergarten trick. So I often refer to this as the kindergarten trick. And I've got my sort of cookie cutter shape. Here we go. I've got those two wings. Now, who's to say that I couldn't just um, tape these on, okay? And then what if I colored them first? So instead of using paint, maybe I'm not as excited or I don't have the colors that I'd really love, I could maybe colorize. I'm doing this really fast because I don't think you want to listen to Mrs. McGonagall color all day. That would be kind of creepy. But what if, okay, I had my wing here and then I could tape this on and scotch tape would work totally fine. I would most likely, if I was adding the paper thing, do you see how I colored this first before I stuck it on? I'd probably make all of my pieces and sort of, you know, hodgepodge and fit them together where I think I'd want them to go before I went and taped them on because it'd be really hard to color the 3D shape. Make sense? 
All right, this video is rather long because I wanted to show you a ton of ways in which you could make this. You could zoom fast forward, you can look at my thing and kind of go from there. Some of you are really good about coming up with ideas just by looking at things. Alrighty, I cannot wait to see what you make. I cannot wait to see how you take this totem pole idea and make it your own. So that is your assignment between now and next week. I will leave that up if, if I notice people are still not done. Um, if you are my student and I take down the lesson and I archive it, you can absolutely dojo message me a picture. Sometimes that might not take so uh, much space up in your teacher's feed and still a way that I can check you off in my awesome online grading book um, to see that you've done the project. Okay, happy creating.